Well, hello everybody. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in. Well, see I'm out again tonight. And uh, tonight's target is going to be the Pac-Man Nebula. So, stay tuned. NGC 281 was discovered by the American astronomer Edward Emerson Barnard in August of 1883. At a magnitude of 7.4, it is one of the several well-known nebulae in the constellation Cassiopeia. The others are the Heart and Soul Nebula, IC 1805 and Westerhout 5, near the border with Perseus and the Bubble Nebula, NGC 7635, near Cepheus. The Pac-Man Nebula, NGC 281, is a large emission nebula appearing near the orange giant Shadar in the constellation Cassiopeia. The nebula lies approximately 9,200 light-years away and occupies 35 arc minutes of the apparent sky. It is also catalogued as IC 11 and Sharpless 184. It was named the Pac-Man Nebula for its resemblance to the Pac-Man, the character in the popular 1980s maze video game. In optical images, a dark dust lane forms the Pac-Man's mouth. The Pac-Man Nebula stretches 48 light years across. It is a star-forming region that contains young stars, large dust lanes, and Bach globules. Bach globules are small, dense, dark nebulae packed with material from which new stars are formed. The dark dust lanes spread unevenly across the glowing clouds of hydrogen and its appearance suggests that it's being sculpted by a massive star in the background, concealed by the dark clouds. The Pac-Man Nebula lies in the Perseus spiral arm of the Milky Way. Named after the constellation Perseus in which it is seen, the Perseus spiral arm is one of our galaxy's two major spiral arms. The other one is in the Scotum Centaurus arm. The Perseus spiral arm is believed to lie about 6,400 light years from the Sun and has a radius of about 10.7 kiloparsecs. It is over 60,000 light years long and about 1,000 light years wide. The Pac Man Nebula is very easy to find because it lies near Cassiopeia's W, one of the most distinctive asterisms in the northern sky. It appears just east of Shadar, the bottom right star of the W, and south of the binary star Akerd. The nebula is easily visible in small telescopes. All right, thank you very much for staying with me. Well, it turns out that I got a very, very productive night of, uh, of astrophotography in. Uh, on this particular night, I was able to soak up about uh, five hours and 12 minutes of total exposure time. Uh, which turned, which worked out great. All right, the uh, the Pac-Man Nebula is one of those uh, targets that I really hadn't given a lot of thought to, but uh, I was uh, since I knew we were going to have good weather uh, on this particular night, I decided to go into uh, into Stellarium uh, as well as online and start trying to find some additional targets, and I came across the Pac-Man Nebula. Now, the reason I chose this this particular night was because, um, being that I had the entire night and uh, I could get started earlier, uh, sunset is around 7.06 now uh, on the East Coast. And uh, so that means I can get polar aligned and get out and start imaging much sooner. So I was looking for a target that would actually become visible uh, in my backyard uh, the earliest. The Pac-Man Nebula was a, uh, a prime target. Uh, it's a circumpolar uh, object, meaning that it never actually sets. And it actually stays uh, up pretty high pretty much all night. Uh, I actually could have gotten probably seven hours altogether had I started just a little bit earlier. But uh, I felt that that probably would have been a bit of, uh, a bit of overkill. But uh, a little over five hours was plenty. And uh, I'm very happy with the results that I got. 
Now, all of the processing that, uh, that I did on this was done uh, entirely in PixInsight and uh, the finishing touches were done in Photoshop. Just a little bit of color correction and uh, things of that nature. All right, uh, I used the Explore Scientific AR-102 refractor telescope, which seems to be the, uh, the telescope that I, right now that I'm using the most often. Uh, there are some targets where uh, I will uh, choose some other scopes to use uh, for that, but uh, this gave me the best framing, I thought, for this particular target. Uh, so I stuck with this. All right, uh, I use the, uh, the Optolong L-Extreme filter, uh, as I normally do from my light polluted area, which gives me fantastic results. And uh, the ZWO 533 MC Pro uh, is my imaging camera, as well as astrophotography tool uh, for my capturing software. All right, well, without further ado, I'd like to show you the finished processed image. And as always, until next time, and clear skies.